We want to take a look at solving a rational inequality. We're given a function f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 divided by the quantity x minus 1. Now we want to solve symbolically, meaning we're going to be doing some algebra. We want to know when is 2x minus 3 divided by x minus 1 less than or equal to the number 1. We must be cautious with these rational inequalities. The fact is, because of asymptotes and because of these other objects, we have to be careful. We cannot, for example, cross multiply. We cannot take advantage of a lot of tips and tricks that we may have learned. What we can take advantage of is we know how fractions behave. So rather than looking at where is this rational expression less than 1, Let's set this inequality equal to zero. I know what makes a fraction positive and I know what makes a fraction negative. So instead of trying to figure out when is 2x minus 3 over x minus 1 less than 1, let's rewrite this as when is 2x minus 3 over x minus 1 subtract 1 less than or equal to zero. So really I just subtracted one from both sides of the equation in order to get one side to be equal to zero. Now I remember how to add fractions, I need a common denominator. So I have 2x minus 3, his denominator is x minus 1. Well I can rewrite the number 1 as a fraction. After all, anything divided by itself is 1. So I will rewrite him as x minus 1 over x minus 1. When is this less than or equal to 0? When we subtract fractions, we keep that common denominator. So I know half my answer is x minus 1. For the numerator, we have 2x minus 3, and be careful here, minus x, and subtracting a negative 1, same as adding 1. So when's this guy less than or equal to zero? Combining our like terms, 2x minus x will yield x, negative 3 plus 1, negative 2, so x minus 2 over x minus 1. When is this less than or equal to zero? What we're looking at right now is a new rational expression, x minus 2 over x minus 1. Now, a fraction is less than zero, meaning it's negative, Good question. I know. When is a fraction negative? Well, that happens if the numerator is negative and the denominator is positive, or the other way around. The fact is, I want to know, when am I going to get different signs in my numerator and in my denominator? So those are the two things we're going to focus first on. I'm going to find out when does my numerator equal to zero. Well, that happens whenever x minus 2 is equal to zero. Adding 2 to both sides, I know that it happens when x is equal to 2. Same thing now for the denominator. I want to know when is that denominator equal to zero. Well, that means I want to know where does x minus 1 equal to zero adding 1 to both sides, I know that that happens where x equals 1. So what we have now is a set of regions. I know for a fact my numerator will change signs, go from negative to positive at one point. My denominator will change signs, go from negative to positive at another point. Now it's time to take a look at the total package. We have three regions. Our first region starts at negative infinity, goes all the way to the number 1. Our second region starts at the number 1, goes to the number 2, and our third region starts at the number 2 and goes all the way to infinity. We're going to have sign changes here, but luckily we can use function values to let us know is this fraction, this rational expression, going to be positive or is it going to be negative? So we can do some tests. 
I want a number that's less than 1. How about the number 0? If I plug the number 0 into my original function, f of 0 is going to be 3. That is positive. So I know in region 1 we have positive values. I can test something in region 2, something between negative 1 and 2. And we can actually take advantage of our function. When I take a look, I can test, oh, I don't know, 1.5. That's definitely between 1 and 2. F of 1.5, I did not do it for the first one. I'll do it now. First value, function was actually 2. This one, keep in mind what we're testing is against this function. So, 1.5 minus 2 divided by 1.5 minus 1. This numerator is going to be negative. The denominator is going to be positive. I know I'm going to get a negative answer. If you're interested in it, we'd have negative 0.5 over a positive 0.5. So this would actually give us a function value of negative 1. Nice to know, but not necessary. I was only interested in when is it greater or when is it less than. Finally, we can test our third number, something from 2 to infinity. Why not the number 3? And when I test the number 3, plugging into our current function, 3 minus 2 over 3 minus 1, that's going to give me one half. Don't really care about the function value. All I care is that it is positive. So for our solutions, there was only one region that gave us something negative. That is something less than zero. So for our solution, it would be the region starting at one and going to the number two. Now take a look at the original inequality. It did carry the less than or equal to symbol. We must be careful here. At the number 1, I can't evaluate f of x at all. x minus 1 in the denominator means the number 1 makes the function undefined. So I will have a parenthesis around the number 1. The number 2, I could certainly plug into my function. It is defined because it was less than or equal to. It will carry a bracket. Be careful. Normally we're tempted when we see the less than or equal to to put brackets immediately. The only reason this guy carries a parenthesis where x equals 1 is because 1 is not valid in our original function. We had a function f of x, but the number 1 is where our asymptote would be. It makes the function undefined, so we cannot use it. Our solution is strictly the numbers starting at 1, going to 2 does not include the 1, but it does include the value 2. All right.